Hey everybody, just before we start today's tutorial, I want to tell you about a really great offer I've got running at the moment. It's a bundle deal on the digital editions of my three current books. How to Really Play the Piano, Seven Studies in Pop Piano, and An Introduction to Cocktail Piano. If you buy those ebooks as part of the bundle, you can have all three for £18.95, which is a 30% saving on buying them separately. If you'd like to find out more, head over to billspianopages.com slash bundle. Being able to modulate, being able to change key smoothly is actually a really useful skill. I learnt most of my modulation skills, not in college, but when I was a jobbing piano player going out to weddings and parties and playing sets of 20 or 30 songs. And I always found that if I could string those songs together smoothly by modulating between each new song, then I always got a better reception. I kind of kept the mood going, if you like. But modulation can seem massively complicated. If you go to the Wikipedia page on musical modulation you'll find this epic list of different types of modulation which looks really scary there's like parallel modulation relative modulation uh, pivot chord modulation modal modulation uh, modal interchange chromatic mediant modulation alters chord modulation chain modulation pivot tone modulation have I said that one already maybe basically it can all seem really scary and complicated but it doesn't have to be so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you some quick and dirty ways of modulating that you can start using in your piano playing right away. Okay, let's get going. For our first modulation we're going to change from one major key to another major key that's an interval of a fifth above it. In the example we're going to look at that's going to be from B flat up to F major. We would say that F was the target key there. You can also use this mo modulation to move from B flat to D minor Okay, but we'll deal with that in a few minutes. For now, let's focus on the B flat to F major, which is going to be modulating up an interval of a fifth. If you look at the tonic notes of the two keys, you can see they are a fifth apart. One, two, three, four, five. You could also say that they were a fourth apart if you went down the piano keyboard. One, two, three, four. But in this tutorial, I'm mainly going to talk about modulating up just for the sake of consistency. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to play through the final few bars of a song in B flat major, then play the modulation and then start the new song in the key of F major. And to start with, all I want you to do is listen. The modulation is quite quick, blink and you'll miss it, but you should hear that it's a fairly clean modulation. Don't, don't try to look at what I'm doing for now, because I'll go through that all in detail in a, in a minute or two. Just use your ears to start with. So let's start off by playing the final bar or two of our song in B flat major. And now we're into our song in the target key of F major. Did you notice how quick that, that modulation was? It really didn't take very long. Let's look at exactly what I did there. We finished our song in the key of B flat major. Let's re-establish that, um, that B flat major tonality in our ears. Okay, this is one of the difficult things about talking about modulations. You have to kind of um, kind of switch your brain between keys very quickly, as it were. So let's make sure we're clearly back in the key of B flat major. Now, when I finished the song in B flat major, I then looked for this chord, G minor seven. And I played that in that particular inversion, in that shape, and then I followed it with this chord, which is only one note different. Okay, so I've just taken the D and flattened it. So from G minor seven down to G minor seven flat five. Okay, you can double that flat fifth in the bass with a bit of an extra emphasis. So we're going from our B flat, we're going to G minor seven, G minor seven flat five, and then resolving out to F. And that puts us pretty comfortably in the new key, F major, and we can start playing our F major song. Yeah. Hopefully that sounded like a pretty smooth transition to you. Just to dig into some of the underlying theory, that is a variation of what we call a common chord modulation. What I've done is look at the two keys, 
B flat major and F major. And as you're probably aware, each of those two keys has its own diatonic chords, the chords that grow naturally out of its scale. So here are the diatonic chords of B flat major, and here are the diatonic chords of F major. And what I'm looking for is a chord that the two have in common. Now, luckily, these two um, major keys, because they're a fifth apart and very closely related, have several chords in common. So I'm kind of spoilt for choice. But the one I'm going for to power my modulation is G minor, which I'm just extending out to G minor seven. Now there's a reason for that. I can I can um, start off in my key of B flat major, okay, and I finish my song in B flat major. I'm moving to the G minor seven chord there sounds very natural because that is diatonic, that's naturally occurring in the key of B flat major. It's the number six chord in the key of B flat major. But I'm gonna stop thinking of it as the number six chord in B flat major and start thinking of it as the number two chord in F major. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six chord in B flat major, in F major, it's the number two chord, one, two. Now that means we can jump onto what we call a two, five, one progression in the key of F major, a really, really common chord, um, sort of little progression in music that's used to get us back to the tonic chord. So I'm in B flat, but I'm now thinking of that chord as the number two chord in F major. And then if I were playing a pure two, five, one progression, I'd go from there to the number five chord in F major, C or C7, which takes us to F major, a really clean modulation. But because I, I didn't want it to sound quite that neat and tidy, instead of playing a pure two, five, one, I played G minor seven, G minor seven flat five, which is kind of a, um, a substitute chord for the C7, okay? It's a chord substitution, something we do very often in jazz, but it has the same effect as the C7 chord, and that takes us naturally to the F. The reason it has the same effect as the C7 chord, or a similar resolving effect, is because of what we call voice leading, yeah? Um, voice leading is a very, very big subject, but basically it's to do with the way that particular notes, when they're played in particular combinations, set up expect expectations in our listener's ear that certain other notes will come next, and usually those notes that we expect to come next are very close to them, okay? Very close together. So if we imagine ourselves in the key of F major, if we play our dominant seven chord, we've got several um, notes there that, that from a voice leading point of view very strongly want to take us from F. We've got the leading tone in the key of F major, E, which really wants to go up to F. We've got the B flat, which wants to come down to the A. We've got a tritone in there. Okay, which we, we talked about in a tutorial I made a couple of weeks ago, so that's a real instability. And we've also got at least one note that's already in the F chord, so our ear really expects that F chord. Yeah, the voice leading really sets that up. But that chord has a similar effect, because we've got the F of the F chord, we've got the um, D flat, which is just a semitone above the C, we've got the B flat, which is just a semitone above the A, it resolves really nicely to F. Okay, so a basic 2-5-1 progression used to modulate, but altered slightly. Let me just go through it again. We're starting in B flat major. I'm going to G minor 7, G minor 7 flat 5, and then to F. The first chord of the new key, I can then start playing in the new key. You can also use this modulation to take yourself to a minor key. D minor, which as you may know is the relative minor key of F major. It's the minor key which in its natural form shares the same key signature. It has the same sharps and flats in it, namely one B flat, which is the same, the same, <clears throat> the same flat that we find in the key of F. Now to make a convincing transition here into the key of D minor, we have to change our voice leading a little bit. Let's get ourselves back in B flat. Now, let's try modulating into D minor using exactly the same chord shapes. G minor seven, G minor seven flat five, D minor. 
Now it kind of works, but it's not quite as strong as modulating into F. We can make it stronger by changing the voice leading, changing the shape of the chord we're using. Let me do it again. Let's get back into B flat. Right, I want to uh, modulate into uh, D minor now. Here we go. Go to our G minor 7 chord, but now I'm going to change the shape of the chord. Okay, that's a much stronger modulation. You can probably see why. That top note is the one that plays the greatest role in establishing the expectation of what the next note will be, or the next chord will be, um, after the one that we're playing. And because that's immediately below D, it wants to take us up to D much more naturally than if we were in that position. So for our second quick and easy modulation, we're gonna be moving between major keys again, but this time we're gonna be traveling an interval of a fourth up the piano keyboard rather than a fifth. And that's gonna be pretty handy because our example is gonna be taking us from F up a fourth, one, two, three, four, to a target key of B flat. So if we string modulations one and two together, we can start off in B flat, move up a fifth to F, and then move up a fourth and get ourselves back into B flat again. Once again, we can think of B flat as either being a fourth above F or a fifth below it, and that's going to be important in a second. So let's imagine that we're finishing up playing our song in F major. a strong F major tonality. How are we going to get to B flat? Well, there's one way that would be quick and easy and seems really, really obvious. F, the chord that we're, that we're playing as the tonic chord in our original key, is the number five chord of our target key, B flat. So, strictly speaking, all we really have to do is to take that F, maybe give it a stronger dominant feel by making it an F7, and perhaps playing it in that inversion, so we've got the A at the top, the leading tone right below the B flat, and that takes us really strongly into the new key. Let me just, as I say, we're not going to use this modulation, I'll talk about why in a second, but let me just show you how that works again. There's the end of our song in F. B flat. I don't like that modulation for a couple of reasons. First of all, it sounds too easy. It's too kind of neat and tidy, pat on the head, well done, you have modulated between keys. Okay, it's, it's not particularly interesting, it's not particularly cool. Also, I've been demonstrating it in relative isolation there. In practice, what I often find is that if you use that kind of modulation, it's not actually very secure. It can sound like you haven't changed key, depending on the nature of the two songs that you've changed between. So you can get into your new song in the target key, and because your, your next chords might also belong in F major, it might sound that you haven't actually moved very far. So it's not always as strong a modulation as you might think, okay? Sometimes it works perfectly well, but even then, like I said, it's a bit cheesy, it's a bit cliched. We wanna stay away from that. What I'm gonna do then is show you a slightly more interesting modulation that I think is more secure and also has a cooler sound. What we can't do here is what we did in modulation number one. We can't go from our home key and jump on the two, five, one for the target key. That's because our home key is F, our target key is B flat. If we look at the number two chord of B flat, that would be C minor, which we don't have in F major. In F major, we have C major, okay? So that wouldn't be very comfortable. There are various other ways we could do it, but a quick and easy way to do it is to use a diminished seventh chord. So let's finish up in F major. There we are. And now let's just, just jump to C diminished seventh. Okay, really, really quick and easy and straightforward. And you should find that that's now really secure in the key of B flat. Now, diminished seventh chords are incredibly useful when you're modulating because they're so unstable. If you saw my tutorial on tritones a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that diminished seventh chord con chords contain two tritones. Tritones are incredibly unstable. That chord really wants to go somewhere else. 
and actually we could use it to go several places we don't necessarily have to go to B flat from there but that's going to be our safest and strongest bet if we wanted to we could also use that um, diminished seventh chord to modulate to the relative minor of B flat which would be G minor but we, we might want to change the voicing the inversion of that chord just so that the voice leading works a bit better I'd probably just come down like this so let's get ourselves in F major if I wanted to go to G minor from there I'd probably do something like this much more natural. I could play that with an A in the bass so it became A diminished seventh, but we, we could use that diminished seventh chord to go to the G minor um, just as easily as to the B flat, just by thinking carefully about our voice leading. When you're doing all this voice leading stuff, resist the temptation to disappear off to Wikipedia, learn everything you can about voice leading and use that to guide your modulations. Far better to play around and use your ear, by the way, okay? Just use your own judgment, your own uh, you know, your own listening skills to work out what, what works best. Kind of trial and error. Doesn't sound like a very glamorous way of learning, but it's the most effective way of doing it. Something else you can do here is use, especially if you're playing in a jazzy style, is use a tritone substitution. I've talked about tritone substitutions loads in the past, but let's look at how one would work in our target key of B flat. So here we are in B flat major. Now our regular dominant chord, our five chord in B flat major would be F or F7 if we played it as dominant seventh chord. And that is our strongest resolution back to B flat. But obviously if we're playing in jazzy styles, we wanna avoid that kind of neat and tidy 5-1 sound. And very often the way we do that is by using a tritone resolution and we build our tritone resolution by taking the root of the number five chord taking it up a tritone three whole tones three whole steps one two three that takes us to B or C flat however you want to think about it and we build a dominant seventh chord on that note using that note as the root and that takes us really strongly just as strongly really as the five chord back to the tonic okay and what a lot of people often do, and I often do, is retain the root of the original five chord in the bass. So you've got uh, B7 over F takes us to B flat. Now let's look at how that can work in terms of our modulation, because you might see that that B7 chord is really just a note away from that C diminished seven chord we were looking at a second ago. So what we can do, finish up our song in uh, F major, then go, keeping our F in the bass really handy, to the B7 in the right, and a nice neat tidy modulation. That won't take you to the G minor quite as easily. It, it, it kind of works, but it's not as strong. Yeah, I'd probably use the diminished 7 if I wanted to get to the G minor. But that tritone substitution is really handy, and again, if you're playing jazz, it's a very, very quick and easy way of modulating keys. If you can jump onto your target keys tritone sub easily, then that will shift you between keys very quickly. So our first two modulations were mostly about changing between major keys. We looked at a couple of options for breaking out into a minor key, but mostly it was major to major. What I want to do now is just dig into um, some more modulations that involve minor keys and show you some of the things that you can do with those. The first one I want to look at is probably the most common type of modulation that goes major to minor or minor to major, and that is the modulation that happens between relative keys. And this one's really simple and straightforward. Let's just remind ourselves what relative keys are. If you have a major key like C major, it has a relative minor key which is really closely related to it, and that key is A minor. Now that's the scale of A natural minor. There are different types of minor scale, but it's a natural minor scale, the most important type of minor scale that we're interested in here. As you can see, the notes of those two scales are identical. It's just all the white notes in an octave of the piano keyboard. It's just that we're starting and finishing in a different place. Okay, so the C major starts and finishes on a C, the A minor starts and finishes on an A. And because it's starting and finishing in, in a different place, it has a slightly different pattern of tones and semitones, of half steps and steps, which gives it the different sound. But really, C major and its relative minor, A minor, are two sides of the same coin. Let's have a look at another one. Let's look at F major. 
there's the scale of F major. Its relative minor is D minor, which shares all the same notes, it just starts and finishes in the same place. If we saw these two keys written down in sheet music, they would also share a key signature. So the key signature of F major has a single B flat in it, and the key signature of D minor also has a single B flat in it. So because major and minor keys are very closely related, it's actually really easy to modulate between them. In some ways, it's not really a modulation at all. You're not, in some senses, you're not changing key. Let me just demonstrate. So let's imagine we've finished play a, playing a song in A minor. gone into C major really easily there. Let's repeat that and get ourselves back into A minor. Yeah, you can move between them very easily. Just a slight quirk there, you'll notice when I played the A minor section, I used an E major chord. That's because, as you may know, when we're playing minor key songs, or when we're writing minor key songs, often instead of the natural five chord in A minor, which will be E minor, we use a major chord to give it a slightly stronger resolution back to the tonic. Okay, that's all that's happening there. So modulating between relative key keys is actually really easy, easy, and you don't really have to modulate at all. If you want to make a clear break between the two keys, then the thing to do is to drop a dominant chord in. So let's finish our A minor song by getting back to the tonic. And I want a really clear break to take me into C major, so I'm going to play a G chord which is diatonic to A minor, so that's fine, it doesn't feel like a big key change, but it takes us, because it's the five chord of C major, it takes us comfortably into C major. Now let's get back into A minor. That's a more dramatic change because we're using that major five chord for A minor but it takes us back quite nicely. So if I wanted to modulate between C and A minor, I would just do that, to be honest, because it's nice and straightforward. Slightly more challenging than, in some ways, the modulating between relative keys is modulating between parallel keys. Now, just as every major key has a relative minor and every minor key has a relative major, so every key also has a parallel key of the opposite tonality. So the parallel key of C major is C minor. The parallel key of F minor is F major. Now if you want to modulate from a minor key into its parallel major, that's pretty straightforward, okay? You can literally just jump. Let's finish our song in A minor again. That sounds fine. It feels like a little bit of a lift. It feels quite natural. But now let's try going back into the parallel minor. Oh dear. <laughs> sounds kind of miserable, doom laden, and like the end of the world. Yeah? Okay, so going from a minor key into its parallel major, great. It just feels like a lift. It's like the same effect as a Disney key change, you know, where you're doing. where you're just modulating up a semitone in the final chorus of a song or whatever. Um, so we need to find a way, an easier way of modulating from um, major to parallel minor. The way I tend to do it is like this. Let's imagine we've got a song in C major and we want to get to C minor. I would do this, end our song in C major. Can you hear how that's more natural? There's a more, I've, I've made more of a meal of the modulation between the two and I've introduced some chromatic chords, if you like, some, some chords that add extra colour. So I went from a chord of C to a chord of A flat, which doesn't appear in C. It does appear in C minor, the parallel key, but it doesn't have an immediately minor feel. Then I've gone to E flat, 
which again occurs in C minor, not C major, but still has that major feel. And then I've gone to G major, strongly dominant chord for C minor, and then it feels entirely natural to go into C minor. So let's take ourselves from C minor back into C major. Let's get to C minor now. straightforward transition um, those non-diatonic chords uh, that you know the a flat and the e flat you don't have to play them that way around actually it doesn't really matter so you, you could swap them you could go c e flat slightly different sound to a flat and then to g and then to c minor okay it doesn't really matter about the order of the chords there in a strange way it's all about kind of um to use a technical term preparing the modulation, laying the groundwork by changing the colour, if you like, the colour palette that, you, that you're using, but quite subtly so that it's not as striking a difference between the major and minor than if you just jumped between the two. In general, I've never found it that difficult to modulate from minor keys into a variety of major keys. Usually it's just a case of finding the dominant seventh of the major key you want to modulate into. It doesn't work in all cases, but it works in quite a few. So let's go back to our A minor song. And there I've modulated into F. The only way I did that was by going from A minor to C7, which is the dominant seventh chord um, for F major. And it takes us to F really naturally. And that works much more naturally and much more seamlessly than it would, I think, if you were going major to major. Um, let's think of another one. Let's go establish ourselves nice and firmly in A minor. got myself into G major just by finding D7. I could equally have gone to, um, let's go back to um, A minor, I could equally have gone to G minor there. Uh, let's think I would have just done the same thing. Okay, so in some ways because minor keys have that little bit of extra instability to my ears, the major keys, actually finding your way um, out of them and into a different key is actually a little bit easier than if you're in major keys which have that kind of additional strength if you like that, that additional groundedness that makes you work harder to transition to modulate out from them. Thinking back on the modulations we've looked at so far you might have noticed that there are two techniques we keep coming back to when we're looking for a quick easy and secure modulation. First of all, we're very often looking for common chords, chords that our starting key and our target key have in common. We sometimes call them pivot chords. If we can find one of those chords that both keys have on their list of diatonic chords, then more often than not we can go to it and use it as the basis for a fairly quick modulation. The other technique we keep coming back to is this idea of using very unstable chords, like diminished seventh chords, that throw the tonality up into the air and allow us to travel from one key to quite a remote key sometimes just by creating that very high level of uncertainty that these tritone based chords have. One exercise that you could try now, which you might find really useful, is to um, find five or six songs that you really like playing and put them in a list and try to make sure that you don't have any songs in the same key next to each other. And just play through the list and as you get to the end of one song, try to make a smooth transition into the next one and try to uh, improvise a modulation, if you like, into the new key. Now, at first that might need a bit of trial and error, but as I've said, that's a really, really good way to learn. That's how I learn a great deal of this stuff, sitting for hours, you know, practicing and playing at weddings and parties and things, thinking, oh, I'm in F, I need to get to C next, I don't want to break, how am I going to do that? So play around, 
see what you can come up with. That's a really good way of getting a lot of this stuff under your fingers, far more reliable than trying to learn lots of theory from you know Wikipedia or a textbook or whatever. In particular, it will teach you the particular chord shapes and voicings that are going to help you when you want to modulate. As we've said, voice leading is really important when you're modulating and getting a sense of how different chord shapes will take you in different directions is really important. Sometimes it's going to be easy, sometimes it's going to be difficult and I just want to give you an example of a situation where actually it might be a bit more difficult. That's where you have an original key and a target key that don't have any shared chords. Let's say for example that we've just finished playing a song in G major. There's the scale of G major and the diatonic chords of G major are G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp diminished and back to G. But you want to move, you want to modulate into a song that's in the key of E major. Here are the diatonics of E major. E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, B, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished and back to E. Now you've probably noticed straight away that there are no common chords between the two keys. We could maybe look at using a, a diminished seventh chord to shift between them, but there is another technique we can use. We can look for chords that aren't identical between the two keys, but are rather similar. So a good one to look at here might be the F sharp diminished chord that appears diatonically in the key of G major, because that's only one semitone difference from the F sharp chord, F sharp minor chord that appears in E major. Okay, so let's imagine we've finished playing our song in the key of G major. Let's look at what we could do to get to E major. I would do something like this. G to C to F sharp diminished to B7. And now we're fairly securely in the E. Okay, in the, in the key of E. Let's just break down those chords again. So we went G. Let's get back so firmly back in the key of G. G, C, F sharp diminished, still diatonic to the key of G major, but then to B7. Look, I'm keeping that F sharp in the bass. Yeah, for a, a bit more of a smoother transition. I could play a B if I wanted to, but I'm keeping that F sharp from the F sharp diminished in the bass of the B7 chord, and that takes us to E. That's a little bit more elaborate than, not much, but a little bit more elaborate than some of the modulations we've seen previously. In particular, I'm being sure to drop in that C chord on the way to the F sharp diminished. To use the lingo, I'm preparing the modulation a bit more. That would also be quite a cool modulation to E minor, which is a relative minor uh, of G major, by the way. You wouldn't need a modulation that elaborate, but if you did want to use it, you could do. So have a go at things like that. Sometimes you have to go through more than one chord. What I would avoid doing is situations where, you know, say you know about the circle of fifths and you think, oh, well, all I have to do is go down the circle of fifths, because that would be really clumsy, okay? You would end up going G, G7, C, C7, F, F7, B flat, B flat 7, getting all the way to E down there would take forever. Much better to try and short circuit things by finding a quick solution like that one, which I think is quite an elegant solution actually. I really like that sound. Really comfortably into E major, even though we've got no common chords between the two. Finding that kind of thing, and there are thousands of possible modulations like that, finding that kind of thing is quite fun actually, and it also, also helps you to learn about some of the processes of modulation and get an instinctive feel for them on the way. Okay, so that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I hope there was stuff in there that you're going to be able to take and use in your own piano playing. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Please also check out my books, especially How to Really Play the Piano, the stuff your teacher never taught you. My Patreon crowdfunder at patreon.com slash billhilton. I've got lots of fantastic benefits on offer for people who support me on Patreon. Do check that one out. And also, if you happen to have any questions or comments, stick them in the
the comment thread below and I'll be happy to help you if I can. Okay, happy piano playing and I'll see you next time.